Hello, my name is Guilherme, and this is part three of our introduction to CNIP series. I will talk about optimization of transcranial electrical stimulation in CNIP 3.2. In the first part of the series, Professor Axel Tilsche gave an introduction to the physics of transcranial electrical and magnetic stimulation and showed how to run simulations in CNIPs. In the second part, Dr. Hula Ponti gave showed how to create head models from MRI images and how to do quality control. In this part, I will show how we can use CNIPs in order to optimize transcranial electrical stimulation montages, which factors influence optimization results the most, and some new features coming up in CNIPs 3.2, electric field strength optimization and network optimization. Now for some background. In transcranial electric stimulation, we place electrodes in the scalp to create an electric field in the brain. However, the head tissues such as the skull influence how the electric field spreads. This influence is often not intuitive and depends on subject-specific anatomy. This is where modeling tools such as CNIPs come in as they allow for estimating the electric field in the brain in a subject-specific fashion. What we want to do is take this one step further and use the modeling tools to automatically find the stimulation setup, which are individualized and tailored towards specific objectives, such as simulating a target region as focal as possible, especially in multi-channel TES. The human head is a linear or ohmic conductor. This means that we can calculate electric fields for new electrode setups by mixing and matching different simulation results for other se uh, electrode setups. This is extremely useful for TS optimization. Here, for example, we have two simulations. In the left, we have an anode over FC3 and a cathode over CZ. And in the right, we have moved the anode to a more posterior position CP3. Suppose that I want to calculate a new situation where I'm using both of the anodes at the same time. Instead of running a new simulation, I can basically just sum the two existing ones and I get the same exact result as I would get by simulating this here in the first place. Now, if I instead want to simulate the electric field that I would obtain by using the FC3 and the CP3 positions without CZ, I can multiply the second simulation by minus one and sum them. Now, the net result is a zero current control CZ, and it goes completely out of the picture, as we can also see here in the electric field. This linearity property allows us to given a fixed list of electrode positions in the limited set of simulations, calculate electric fields caused by any combination of such electrodes as a simple matrix vector multiplication. Here, E is the electric field, A is the lead field matrix, which is a set of pre-calculated electric fields, and X is, uh, is and X are electrode currents. Uh, CNIPs can calculate this, uh, this lead field matrix extremely efficient in between 15 minutes to one hour, depending on your computer. And the code is very straightforward. It looks just like this. It's just four lines of code in MATLAB or equivalent code in Python. Now we can turn our attention to specifying the optimization problem. With the exception of the network op optimization that I'll talk about later, CMNIBS uses a control formulation for the optimization problem. This means that the user sets a target position direction, such as shown here, the right-hand side. By default, CMNIBS uses the normal direction, that is the electric field component that is entering or leaving the cortex. Axel talks more about it in the first part of the series. 
uh, the user also needs to give uh, desired field intensity at the target, such as 0 0.2 volts per meter, safety constraints, that is how much current we can inject both in total as well as through each electrode, and uh, maximum amount of electrodes, which means the number of channels in, in our multi-channel TES system. SimLibs offers an easy to use yet flexible interface in order to set the top of optimizations. Here you can see I start by selecting a previously calculated lead field and the name for my optimization. I then go on to define uh, the safety constraints. A uh, maximum current I can inject in total. And the maximum current I can inject through each electrode as well as a number of active electrodes, which correspond to the number of channels in my multi-channel TS system. Finally, I define my target position and the intensity of the electric field at the target. Now I can run it. and it converged. And the result. Okay, so now, here we can see the target, which is, so both the location and direction. We have, here is the electric field norm in the cortex, which as you can see is more or less centered around the target region and spread out around it. Um, I can also see the electric field vectors if I want to. And finally, I can see the electrode currents that I can use in order to create this electric field in the brain. Now, suppose I want to hit this target a little bit harder at 0 0.3 volts per meter. I can just change this line, save it, and run again. Now we can see the electric field is a little bit more spread out than before. This is the intensity for KD trade-off and I will talk more about it soon. If I want to select a different position, I can just open the T1FS conform nifty file in the subject M2M folder. Here, for example, I've opened it in free view and select the position I want to optimize. I just copy over these brass coordinates. Take it over here. Say I want the target is 0 0.2. Save it and run again. And now you can see I've changed the target and it's now here in the so-called wall. And I have an optimization result. Besides this MATLAB interface, Simlips also has a Python interface which looks more or less exactly similar to the MATLAB one with very minor changes. Now, as you see, the, as you saw previously, the coordinates that I input are subject specific coordinates. 
I can also use MNI coordinates with the help of this MNI to subject chords function, which is a part of SimLibs. There is also uh, the same function in Python that you can use from both MATLAB and Python. The effect of target intensity in the optimization results. The target position is shown as a plug circle and the optimization direction is normal to the cortex as we normally do in CNIPS. We see that as we increase intensity in the target, the electric field spreads out more and more. When we reach a certain threshold, CNIPS will stop taking into account focality and focus exclusively in maximizing the electric field at the target. Here, we can see the effect of target location in the optimization solution. The best results are normally obtained when the target is located close to electrodes. If the target is located in between electrodes, we can't create a very focal, focal field around it as we are forced to use further away electrodes. Or if a target is deep in the cortex, the current needs to flow through superficial areas in order to reach it. This means that we get larger electric fields in superficial areas and therefore the, the field is spread out. An easy fix to obtain better optimization results is to use a denser electrode cap. Here are two examples of optimization results for the same target using the same safety constraints and the same number of electrodes. We see the results for higher density cap are way more focal just because it can place electrodes closer to the target. As of now, SimLibs only offers the 1010 EG cap by default, which is relatively low density. However, we plan on adding higher density caps in the future. One factor which we found not to be particularly important to obtain focal electric fields is the number of active electrodes. In, the, in this example, there are three optimization results with four, six, and an unconstrained amount of active electrodes. We see some small gains in focality in going from four to six electrodes. For example, eliminating the side maximum over here. However, the difference between six and unconstrained, possibly over six electrodes, is very small. The definition that CMIPS uses for optimization problems is very flexible. It allows for the user to define multiple targets, which would be considered independent to a large extent. This, in this example, we define two targets, one in each hemisphere. As we can see, we have basically one focus here, another focus there. And here we have the code to run this kind of optimization. It's also pretty straightforward. We just select set one target and set the other target just as we set the, the previous one. SimNips also lets you define special positions to be avoided. Suppose you're optimizing a TACS montage in order to obtain electric fields in a volatile target. However, this, electric, this optimized electric field has a large electric fields here in the eyeballs, and you don't want that because it might induce false fins. CNIPS allows you to mark the eyes as a special region where fields are to be specially avoided. And when you turn that on, we can see that the simulate that the optimization results change drastically to really avoid the electric field in the eyes. Now for an overview of the most important factors for obtaining focal fields. The most important one seems to be target location and electrode cap density. Having nearby electrodes is fundamental to be able to focally stimulate a target. After that comes target intensity and the safety limits. Setting a smaller intensity frees up more current that we can use to cancel off-target fields and relaxing the safety limits has the same effect. Finally, the smallest effects come from increasing the number of uh, active electrodes beyond the approximately eight. 
adding more active electrodes, then that contributes very little to the optimization performance. Uh, if you're interested in learning more, we published a paper in NeuroImage where we studied these effects not only in a few simple positions as done here, but in 10,000 positions spread throughout the cortex for a very thorough analysis. Finally, there are some interactions that we need to be aware of. For example, if, if we increase target intensity, we can compensate by increasing current limit. Or if we increase the number of targets, we should increase the current limit or increase the number of and increase the number of active electrodes in order to gain focality back. Now for some features we will introduce in CMIP 3.2. As mentioned previously, for the TS optimization, we need to define the prefer preferential directions. Simlib selects normal direction by default because we know it to be more the most important one for cortical stimulation. So normally do not need to think about it. However, for subcortical targets, it is often not easy to define such preferential direction. Therefore, we are introducing any feature which will allow for optimization using electric field norm or strength, which is rather the total length of the electric field vector. Here we see an example of electric field strength optimization for a subcortical target marked in black. As the target is deep inside the brain, the optimized electric fields are very focal, but you can still see some of the focal intensity trade-off going on. To set this kind of optimization is going to also be very simple. It's basically the same as the traditional one. You just need to set the direction to none. And it can even take se several targets simultaneously as shown for the directional optimization. Now, and this in lib 3.2, we also feature optimization of distributed targets, that is network optimization. This means you'll be able to use resting state fMRI DMAP as an optimization target. Here is an example of how to do it. The code is quite straightforward is all you need to do is to give a target TMAP that you want to reproduce and a few more set settings like safety constraints, number of maximum electrodes, and target intensity. So in conclusion, CMIPS has optimization algorithms that allow you to automatically find the best TS electrode montages to reach a given electric field in a target region while minimizing it elsewhere. The quality of the solution is dependent, on, is dependent on factors such as the target position, the electrode cap density, and the target intensity. And in addition to the algorithms to optimize electric fields for cortical targets in, that are already present in CNIPS 3.1, we will, in CNIPS 3.2, introduce new algorithms for optimizing electric fields in subcortical targets and for sub optimizing electric fields as functional networks. So CNIPS is developed by the Neurophysics Group, headed by Professor Axel Bisha, based at the Danish Research Center for Magnetic Resonance, the RCMR, and the Technical University of Denmark, the TU, together with external collaborators. You can download it for free at cnips.org. Uh, we would like to thank our funding sources for making our work in CNIPS possible, and thank you for watching.